Hi there, everybody. Don Garbutt here. Today, I'd like to talk about the Cyclops Synthesizer by Sugar Bites. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the signal flow, and I'm going to discuss one of the synthesis techniques called Analog Sync. I think the best way to work with this instrument would be from the ground up. So we can find an initialization patch in this folder here of patches. There are several different synthesis modes, but before we proceed, I just want to make sure that we've turned off all effects and modulators. So we're just going to take a look around the instrument and make sure that we've done that. Here we have an amazing modulator that deals with LFO shapes. We're going to make sure that we have it switched off by clicking here on the play command. Some modulatable parameters have an A and a B value. You can sequence or modulate the movement between the A and the B value with this control here. So we're going to make sure that we have it switched off as well. Now to the effects department where the effects selector is actually pointing at an effect that is loaded here. So what we're going to do is simply move that to the next position and make sure that its play command is not active by clicking here. We'll talk more about the modulation down the line, but this control here allows us to set a range between unaffected and extremely affected. In this case, this is the cutoff point of filter number one. When I've selected sound control here and make this adjustment, as I move this knob to the right, the filter setting increases its position gradually towards this value. You can see a micro display of it going on here. So when the knob is down, the filter is at its rest position here. But as I increase the knob value, the filter setting will move closer to the top value. This knob is modulatable by the sequencer and the LFO as well. We're going to make sure it's switched off so there's no time-based modulation or change of this position. And we're going to push it down to the far left. Here we have controls for bass EQ and stereo width. Let's turn them both back to zero. And then we're going to go to the distortion section and make sure that it's not actually doing anything. Now the best way to check is we can see right here that it's not reading anything. But if you click here, you can see a menu of distortion types which would read out the title if you selected them. By choosing the top position we have disabled distortion or we can simply turn the knob to zero. Cyclop has two multi-mode filters here. We're going to disable these and we'll talk about them later. Here we have a sine wave sub oscillator. We should turn that off so that we can listen to the clear sound of the oscillator section over here. But it's nice to be able to add more fundamental when we get interesting sounds on the go by adding in the sine wave here. And it has an octave switch underneath here. Cyclop has two dual oscillator sections. We're going to turn off oscillator number two and deal with oscillator section number one. The first synthesis mode I'm going to discuss is actually the second one on the menu here, which is the analog sync mode. Analog Sync gives you two oscillators, oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. You can blend their volumes here. I'm going to pull up my oscilloscope so you can see the wave shapes that we're creating here. We have a blend of two oscillators possible with this control. Here we have pitch fine tuning, octave shift, and unison detune. All these knobs are controllable by the modulators in Cyclop. Now as far as the signal path goes, the two oscillator sections go into filters, and the filter pathways are chosen by these buttons here. Here we have a parallel setup. This control allows me to blend the signal strength of the two oscillator sections. That signal proceeds to both filters when we're in parallel mode here. You can control the balance of the signal output levels of the two filters with this control. Series mode 1 will allow us to blend the signals from the two oscillators into filter 1, where the signal then goes into a distortion circuit, which is the same menu of distortion types that we saw up here, and then that signal is passed through filter 2. The amount of distortion is controlled by this knob position. Series mode 2 works in the opposite way, where you have your oscillator blend going into filter 2, passing through the distortion circuit, distortion amount controlled here, where that signal follows through into filter 1 and then on out into the output. Split mode is simply where oscillator 1 goes into filter 1 and oscillator 2 goes into filter 2, where we have a blend of the two filter output signals. So that's basically the signal path section. Now let's go back to the synthesis department. Let's take a look and have a listen to the waveform choices here. Let's just listen to oscillator 1 by turning this knob to the full left. Sawtooth wave. Square wave with variable pulse width. and double sawtooth wave with variable pulse width. So those are the three waveforms to choose from. 
Each oscillator can be set to a different wave, as you can see here. You can really thicken out the sound by going to the unison detuning. Now when it comes to the sync capability, syncing the two oscillators together allows you to have the second oscillator restart its wave cycle every time the start of the cycle of oscillator 1 happens. In short, the second oscillator will kind of jump up and down the harmonic series connected to the harmonics of oscillator 1. So it's an old-fashioned technique, the synced oscillators, but it's really interesting when you start to modulate this value. Normally there's an anti-aliasing algorithm going on here, but we can disable that to get a more raw sound. With these synced oscillators, this knob is controlling the pitch of oscillator number two. And with this switched off, What we've done is we've disabled the keyboard control of the pitch of the secondary oscillator here. And that results in a kind of a fixed format quality about the combination of these two oscillators. So there's your introduction to the analog sync synth method. In the following videos I'm going to get to the different synthesis methods that are on this menu. And of course we'll talk about the most awesome feature of this instrument which is its modulation capabilities. I hope you enjoyed this video and please check out the following videos in this series. Don Garbutt signing off.